The UK government's historic defeat in the House of Commons on Tuesday night is without parallel in modern, potentially in any times, a 230 vote defeat for a policy the government had been selling hard for six months, which the Prime Minister had massively, massively staked her authority on, is a remarkable thing to happen, particularly in the British uh, political and parliamentary context. Now that's happened, we know that Theresa May's deal with the EU is dead. So looking forward, the question is what happens next? She said she'll reach out to other parties, but she shows no sign yet of being willing to change her fundamental position. And that doesn't suggest that tinkering with it will go very far. So then either Parliament comes up with an alternative proposition, which it can vote through. The Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burko, has made it clear he will allow Parliament to express itself. That's most important. So either Parliament can vote through something which mandates the government somehow to go forward to negotiate something different, possibly asking to suspend or extend Article 50, uh, delaying Britain's departure from the EU, possibly other longer term changes. That's one possibility. Parliament does that. Or alternatively, no deal. Some pro-Brexit MPs are comfortable with no deal, but the majority of the House of Commons is not. So what we're reading from this is a remarkable uh, exposition of the way, in certain circumstances, the executive, cabinet and government, parliament, the legislature, and potentially, if there were to be a, a second referendum, the electorate, the people, work together to solve what is, by any standards, the biggest public policy challenge facing the UK since 1945.